On this, let's bring in the independent MLA for the NT, Robin Lamley. Robin, thanks for your time. Do you welcome the fact that the Prime Minister is certainly pushing via the federal government a return of those alcohol bans? Absolutely, Kieran. I think the Prime Minister is actually our only hope. The, the Northern Territory Government has systematically failed and neglected Central Australia for a long time. Even this morning she was on radio and TV trying to uh, uh, not answer questions and not respect uh, the position we're in in Central Australia. So I'm hoping that the Prime Minister sees sense. Uh, I'm glad that Darrell Anderson has come up with a, a sensible set of uh, recommendations by all account. And uh, once again, we're on this roller coaster of hoping that, uh, that someone who's got some power will uh, make some changes for us. How soon do those bans need to be reinstated, in your view? Immediately. Um, there's two things that I've been calling for. The, the reinstatement of alcohol bans, particularly on the town camps of Alice Springs, but all those communities, living Aboriginal living areas that uh, had their alcohol bans lifted back in July of last year. And the second thing is we need uh, a curfew in place for children on the streets of Alice Springs. We have to address these large groups of children that are still roaming around the streets of Alice Springs at night unaccompanied by children. We need a caring but very practical practical approach, a child protection approach, to getting them off the street at night. The Attorney-General, Chancy Paik, appears to have had a bit of influence in terms of the, the Northern Territory policy here, quite influential in the wake of the departure of the former Chief Minister. What's going on here in terms of uh, the Attorney-General's support for uh, the alcohol rights, for want of a better phrase, in those Aboriginal living areas? Well, Chancy Paik is our only minister, uh, Northern Territory Government minister, south of Catherine. So he is our minister for Central Australia. He was born and bred in Alice Springs, but he has a very uh, radical and extreme approach, in my view. Uh, and one of them has certainly been played out with this whole business of lifting alcohol restrictions on town camps. Chansey is, uh, has relatives and friends within the organisation Tungunjura Council that runs, manages and represents the town campers of Alice Springs and he was instrumental in um, bringing uh, those alcohol restrict uh, restrictions or grog restrictions out of those town camps. Now he has a very um, strong connection to those camps and I think, uh, uh, I think he's uh, allowed his personal uh, interests to uh, cloud his judgment. Uh, he's been advised by people now right across Australia, Aboriginal, esteemed Aboriginal leaders right across Australia to leave those alcohol restrictions in place, particularly in the town camps that have been notorious for violence and alcohol-related crime and social problems forever, leave those restrictions in there. But despite that, he, uh, he, he and the Chief Minister instigated those bans to be lifted. Now, they're deeply embarrassed by what's happening now at a national, uh, on the national stage. The Chief Minister uh, has failed, as I said earlier, the people of Central Australia, so has Minister Chancy Paik, they, uh, they are now in a position where they have to apologise, they have to backflip, they have to take responsibility for the fact that uh, they were responsible for one of the most destructive decisions I've ever seen in my time in the Territory, and mm. that's almost 30 years, uh, allowing the rivers of grog to run freely for the first time in more than 15 years in all these Aboriginal living areas, including the town camps, has been a disaster. So they're at a crossroads here. Nancy Paik and Natasha Files need to just take ownership of the fact that they have made a very, very bad decision and let's move on and make some good decisions with the help of the Prime Minister, Marion Scrimgeour, the member for Lingiari, who's been against these alcohol bans lifting and many, many yeah. other people in Central Australia but right across the country. Well, yeah, we've spoken to several of them in recent days, Indigenous, non-Indigenous. Uh, you've got Donna Archie, the, the head of the Aboriginal Central mm -hmm. Australian Congress, uh, Dr John Boffer, GP, long-time advocate for the alcohol bans in Alice Springs. So Chancy Pake might have those personal connections, but he clearly hasn't listened to some of the senior health officials. 
He's listened to the wrong people, Kieran. It's very interesting. Darrell Anderson is a senior public servant in Central Australia. She's responsible for housing and child protection in Central Australia. And they asked Darrell, as a senior public servant, to provide them this report with recommendations of how to proceed when it comes to alcohol restrictions. And Darrell, uh, and all credit to her, has said, no, I don't agree with the position you've taken, Chief Minister and Attorney General. I support the wisdom and the experience of all these other people that are saying no. So good on you, Darrell Anderson. Uh, she's the uh, the daughter of a former parliamentary colleague of mine, Alison Anderson, former ATSIC commissioner. Darrell Anderson is one to watch and I'm very proud to say that I've known Darrell a long time and she's really stood up for Central Australia. Now it's up to the Prime Minister and the Chief Minister to listen to Darrell and listen to all the other people that have uh, joined the chorus and make some good decisions. Uh, this is our only opportunity. If they can't come up with some good decisions now, Kieran, I think we're, we're doomed uh, to continue down this very, very sad path of lawlessness and, uh, and misery. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's hope that they can move and move, as you said, immediately. Uh, I've spoken to you a couple of times. I've spoken to others, as, you, as we mentioned there, in terms of Alice Spring representatives. Not anyone from the opposition. What's the opposition's take? What have they been doing in terms of trying to build some response here? Well, the opposition is, um, is, is against the alcohol bans being lifted. But, um, look, it's just been a peculiar time of year, I think, for the opposition. Uh, the, the opposition leader, Leah Finocchiaro, has been on leave. She very rarely takes leave. So I, I think uh, uh, they've been caught on, on the hop to some extent. But I, I know the CLP, the Country Liberal Party, uh, were against these liquor restrictions being lifted in the way that they were. There was no consultation done. They were... It was, uh, you know, this... this uh, nonsense about these um, restrictions being um, uh, race-based policies. Uh, it, it's just a furphy, it's a nonsense. Um, there's... Uh, 100 or more other alcohol restricted areas across the Northern Territory that still come under Northern Territory legislation. So the hypocrisy and the inconsistencies and the nonsense that we're hearing from the Chief Minister around this whole business of these particular policies from the Stronger Futures legislation being race-based policies. Uh, not, to, not to forget that uh, the whole of the intervention basically was rolled out by the, the former federal uh, Labor government under G Gillard and Rudd, uh, you know, yeah. the, the nonsense that we've been hearing around this whole topic is really quite soul-destroying. The fact is that people's lives and, are and being destroyed. The women and children, particularly living on the yeah. town camps, their lives have deteriorated even more over the last six months. So it's, it's just time and, and the opportunity is there to make some changes tonight, today. Yeah, let's hope so. The trauma has been quite clear for all of us to see and, uh, and, and not just those in the Northern Territory right around this country. We do hope that there is going to be some progress. Robin Lamley will stay in touch. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Australia. Thank you.